This federal secretary is unusual for being labeled. It's labeled by the cabinet maker Clark Morse, who worked in Newburyport at the beginning of the 19th century, and only one other labeled piece by him survives and came up for auction last year in California. This piece is very typical of federal secretaries made in the North Shore of Boston at the beginning of the 19th century, and it has a very simple swelled skirt and very simple French feet. This chair is an unusual chair in that it is um, probably a very early rocker. Rocking chairs were around in the 18th century, but dated ones do not survive, particularly before the beginning of the 19th century. This one has a label by the cabinet maker Joseph Short, and it's dated 1806. That makes it likely one of the earliest rocking chairs, that with a date. The other thing that's unusual about this chair is that it was made as a close stool or potty chair, as we say today. We looked very hard into whether the rockers on this chair are uh, original or not and did finish testing to determine whether the finish on the rockers was the same as the finish on the rest of the chair. And unfortunately, that work was inconclusive. But from structural analysis, it appears that these rockers probably are original to the chair. The most obvious feature of this desk and bookcase is the fact that the pediment has been cut down. It's something that seems like vandalism to us today, but oddly enough was done because it was a treasured piece. This piece belonged to the Little family of Newbury, and they were a family of settlers, original settlers, who remained in Newbury for hundreds of years. In the 1850s, they moved into what was then probably the best farm in town and is now SPNEA's Spencer Pierce Little House. When they moved there, they were moving into a 17th century house with relatively low ceilings that couldn't accommodate this treasured family piece. Therefore, in order to save it, they cut down the pediment and replaced the feet. Even so, what survives is one of a series of case pieces that all appear to come from the Toppen shop. Abner Toppen was a Newburyport cabinet maker. He worked between the third quarter of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century. This piece is another related piece, um, one of several that comes out of Abner Toppen's shop and has characteristic of top and shop is this very rounded cutout in the pediment, the use of carved pinwheels, the scroll in the door casing, and the use of French bracket feet and a drop molding in the skirt. This desk and bookcase is what's known in the trade as a married piece in that the top and the base were not made at the same time. However, it seems very likely that the top was made for the original owner of the base. The base was made probably around 1780 to 1800 for Richard Bartlett, who was one of Newburyport's wealthiest citizens. About 20 years, perhaps, after that piece was made, he decided that he wanted to update the piece and went back to the same cabinet maker who added somewhat federal style in the bookcase portion with the cut flames and the use of inlays to a piece that's otherwise quite a Chippendale piece. This ribbon back chair is one of a series of ribbon back chairs that were a popular style in Newbury and Newburyport. It's a fairly simple chair with two slats or ribbons and a ribboned crest. This one came down in the Little family who purchased the Spencer Pierce Little House in 1851. They found a chair like this on site when they moved into the house, which suggests to me that these were extremely common. This is a somewhat formal version of the somewhat commonplace ribbon back chair that survives in Newbury and Newburyport, and clearly was a type of chair that was very popular in the period. This has an upholstered seat, and the use of mahogany suggests that it was a slightly more expensive version than the rush-seated ribbon backs that are also in the exhibition. And this ribbon back chair, like the simple slat back with only two slats, and a rush seat also survived from the Little family who moved into the Spencer Pierce Little House in the 1850s. 
Like that one, this one has several related pieces still surviving in the area, again suggesting that ribbonbacks, while they uh, existed in Salem and Portsmouth as well, were perhaps unusually popular in the Newburyport area. This drop leaf table survives in SPNEA's Coffin House and probably belonged to one of the early members of the Coffin family. It's what's thought of as a four-foot drop leaf table in that when opened, it's basically a four-foot square table. It's the type of table that was extremely common and extremely useful. When the leaves are folded, it could be placed against the wall and then opened up to accommodate a number of diners. This drop leaf table is the one that really started the project at SPNEA to study Newbury Newburyport furniture. It appeared on the market in 1998 and was purchased by SPNEA. Our interest in it was that it was a table that belonged to often Boardman. Boardman was a great swashbuckling character in Newbury and Newburyport, a known hero in town for capturing an English ship during the revolution, but he was so concerned about capturing ships that he was twice captured himself, and he has a diary which begins on the day of an escape from an English prison. The diary then follows his journey through England to Paris, where he meets up with Franklin and Adams, who help him get back to Newbury, where he bothers the English shippers all over again. This chair is from SPNEA's Coffin House. The contents of the Coffin House passed down in many generations of the Coffin family who lived in the house from the time it was built in the 1650s until the end of the 19th century. So many of the contents of the house are from Newbury and Newburyport, including this chair, which, exhibited, which exhibits a characteristic thought to be unique to Newbury and Newburyport, and that is the form of the crest. The crest itself has what I think of as a bow shape with these peaks in the middle of it, and that type of crest appears only in Newbury and Newburyport chairs. This chair is particularly interesting if you look at what's thought of as the voids or the negatives between the the vase-shaped splat and the uh, legs that come up to the crest. You've got a very interesting characteristic parrot shape or bird shape. This chair is one of a set of six that came to SPNEA when it acquired Cogswell's grant in the 1990s. It's a set of chairs that was purchased by the collector Nina Fletcher Little from George Adams, and George Adams lived in the historic Highfields house in Byfield. His family had been in the Newbury Newburyport area for hundreds of years, and this was a set that belonged to his great-grandmother, who lived in West Newbury at the end of the 18th century. Like the chair from Coffin House, it exhibits this characteristic Newbury Newburyport feature, which is this crest with a sort of bow shape in the middle of it. These few pieces of Newbury and Newburyport furniture represent the tip of the iceberg. In fact, there are any number of pieces that survive in private and public collections. Hopefully, SPNEA and others will continue to research furniture like this and other furniture from the New England region. For more information on Newbury furniture and other SPNEA exhibitions, click on the SPNEA logo.